our last exercise, we learned how to use the selection and move tools in Photoshop to create a veggie man or veggie woman. Well, now let's apply what we learned to actual photographs. And what I'm going to do is take this nice sunset picture of Martin Hall. And we can see we've got this little teeny tiny moon in there. And I want to add a nice full moon to it. So I've got this moon shot that I've taken separately. First of all, let's discuss why we want to do something like this. And I know you've probably seen moons certain times of the year that just look huge and beautiful and really full. And you can see the detail in it like you can see in this particular picture. Well, I can tell you right now that you're not going to capture a moon looking all detailed like this because you're not going to get your exposures right in one shot. And from a normal viewing distance, you're not going to get a great big full moon in a picture like this, even if to your eye, the moon is looking big and full. And believe me, when I was looking at Martin Hall, that moon, even though it's not a really great big huge full moon, looked a lot bigger in person than it does in this photograph. And what's happening is to get a picture of most buildings from a normal viewing distance, and let's, let's look at our metadata here, we're going to use a fairly wide angle lens. And the picture of Martin Hall was taken on my bridge camera, and it's taken with a equivalent of a 24 millimeter lens which is quite a wide angle lens. The moon, on the other hand, was taken on my DSLR with an APS-C sensor, which is probably what most of you with DSLRs have. It was taken using a 360 millimeter focal length, which would be the equivalent of 540 millimeter focal length on an old 35 millimeter camera or a full frame DSLR. So what I'm going to do is take these two pictures and combine them and put the full moon into this shot of Martin Hall. So I want to select both the pictures and go up to tools and you could bring these in from outside of Photoshop, but to tell you the truth, when you're going to process multiple photos in layers, or if you want to use HDR Pro, you're a lot better off going in through Bridge or Lightroom if you have Lightroom. So I'm going to go into, photo, into Tools, Photoshop, and I'm simply going to load these files into Photoshop layers. All right, now I'm going to put my Martin Hall picture on the bottom and my moon picture on the top. I'm going to duplicate my Martin Hall layer because that's just what I do in case I mess things up. And I probably don't need to do it, but I'm going to duplicate my moon layer too, just in case I, if I mess up the moon somehow, I can just delete my one layer and stay in Photoshop with having to go outside and open up the layer again. I'm going to turn one of these moon layers off. I'm, I'll make it the top layer and I'm just going to work on this layer here. And what I want to do is select this moon and bring it into my Martin Hall sunset layer. So the easiest way to select the moon is going to be with the quick selection tool or the magic wand. But just to mix things up and make things a little bit more interesting, I'm going to use the marquee tool since this is a fairly circular object. All right, let me show you a couple things on the marquee tool. First of all, your marquee will start from wherever these crosshairs are. But it's not that really that easy to go across and just select the circle because it doesn't go exactly where you want it to go. So I'm going to hit Control or Command D, deselect, and I'll show you one trick with the marquee. If you hit the alternate key on the PC or the option key on the Mac and start from the middle, it's a little easier to make your selection. 
I can do pretty well there, but let me show you another trick. I hit Control D again. I'm going to start from the middle. And this moon's a perfect circle, really. So I don't want the marquee tool to go all elliptical on me like that. I want it to select a circle. So I'm going to start from the middle and hold down my Alt or Option key on the Mac. And then to keep things in perspective, in other words, a perfect circle in this case, and we'll use this again when we do the transform tool, we're going to hold down the shift key. And that'll keep our marquee as a perfect circle. And now we can see it's a little easier to go out. I haven't got it perfect. Bring it down just a little bit. That looks pretty good. And now if I just bring my arrow into the center of it and move it a little bit, I can get it pretty close. I really don't want any black over here, and I can't really tell whether I've got a little bit of black on the side here. So I want to go on my quick mask here. Again, you got to make sure your quick mask, I'll double click to show you, is in the masked area right now. It is, and we can see it's a lot easier right now for me to see that I have a touch of black here. Now I could use my paintbrush and go and paint that off, but I'm going to show you something else. I'm going to take my mask off, and I'm going to go up to my selection menu. I'm going to modify it. And I just want to contract that circle a little bit. And, you know, it's okay if I don't get all the white, but I don't want any black in there. Now, this tells me how many pixels to contract it by. And three is actually a very small amount. And that's probably pretty good. Let me try that. Let me put my quick mask on again. And I think that's just about right. I've got a little of the red going over on the moon here. And maybe I could just move it really slightly there. And if I want to zoom in on this a little bit more to work on it, I can. And I'm not working with my pen today either. And I think that's pretty good, but if I want to double check, there we go. And I think that's perfect. Okay, so now what I want to do, so I'm going to right click, and I'm going to do layer vert via copy. So now I've got my own layer of just the moon, and I could turn off all my other layers and you can see that. I've got just the moon on a transparent background. So let me get rid of this moon layer. I don't need that anymore. That's the one I copied it off of. I could leave those in there and just keep them turned off, but they just take up space when you save things. Now I've got a nice big moon in the picture, but this moon looks like it's about to collide with the earth and wipe out civilization. I don't quite want a moon that big. So let me go down to my hand tool. I'm going to go on fill screen. And I've got a little bit of a problem here in that my moonshot was taken with a higher resolution camera than my Martin Hall shot. But that's really easy to fix. I'm going to make sure all my layers are selected. I'm going to go and crop this background out. So now I could just kind of do it by eye if I want, but I'm going to keep a fairly standard format up here. My original shot was of Martin Hall was four to three. That's what my Panasonic does. But my DSLRs do this two to three format, and I like that better because if I stick with that, I can actually take a little bit of the grass foreground out, which I think there's too much of. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to pull it down. 
I actually want to keep perspectives on. I don't want to crop the sides out really. There we go. I'm just going to crop a little bit of grass off and go with that two to three perspective, which I like. So I'll hit the check mark over here and I've got things cropped. All right, now we're ready to make our moon look a little more realistic. All right, our moon's way too big. So we want to select our moon layer. And again, if we had another layer selected and we went up to start working on the moon, nothing would happen. So if you start fooling with something in Photoshop and things don't work the way that you think they're going to work, make sure that you have the layer that you're working on selected. Let me double click on this and name it Moon. So you remember what it is if we come back and work on it again. And, and now I'm going to go up and use this free transform tool. Now let me show you a little bit of a problem with this free transform tool. If you don't do things exactly right, get your moon way out of perspective. So there's a trick you can use to keep the perspective exactly the same as what you shot. So let me go up and undo what I just did. Just like we held the shift key down when we used our marquee tool to keep things in perspective, we're now going to hold the shift key down as we make our moon smaller and see that it stays as a perfect circle and in the correct perspective. So I'm going to size it about where I want. I can also move it around. I can keep my hand on the shift key then, but I don't have to. Right down in here is where my original moon was in the photo. So I think I'm going to put it down around there. And I think that looks pretty good. I can double click, see whether I like it. And if you want to move it without it being in the free transform, you can go back to the move key. Okay, I like it. I like it right about there. That, lo that looks nice. So we could save our picture here. I think that looks pretty good. But one thing, we've got these clouds here. And let's hit the Control Plus and blow it up and take a little closer look. And if we were, let's make sure we're back on the hand tool. If I go to move something now, I'm going to move the moon off of where it was rather than the whole picture. If I use the hand tool, I'm moving the whole picture. And one of the problems is that the moon's kind of in front of these clouds. And if we looked at it in real life, our clouds should be in front of the moon. So there's some fairly complex ways to deal with that. But with clouds that are transparent, there's a really easy way to deal with it. I could get rid of this moon layer up here. And let's just do that to simplify things and not keep too much up here. And I'm not going to really do anything with my Martin Hall layers, so I don't need to duplicate anything now. I'm going to take my extra layer and bring it up on top of this moon layer. And you see the moon just disappeared. That's because, let's bring it back to the fill screen. That's because the Martin Hall layer is the top layer now with 100% opacity. Now if I want to let that moon show through, all I really have to do is bring the opacity down. I can do that by clicking over here. I'll get a slider. I can type in an amount. But let me show you another trick. We have to make sure our Martin Hall layer is selected. And if we come over here, this double arrow comes up, we can just start using what they call a scrubby slider and bring our opacity down a bit. And you see if you bring it all the way down, your moon pops out in front again. And I think if we just put it down around 30, in the 30 to 35 percent range, I like it there, we can see our clouds over the moon a little bit, but with the moon shining through. And it gives our picture a little bit more of a real look. Well, let me zoom in again. Use our hand tool to bring it down so I can see it. And one issue we've got right now is that our real moon 
is showing over our fake moon. And that's kind of a telltale sign that we've messed with our picture. So that's really easy to get out in this particular case. And there is actually several different ways we can do it. We could use this eraser tool. Problem with that is it's erasing our whole layer. So that doesn't really work very well. So let's undo the eraser. The best tool to use here is just going to be our spot healing brush. So let's take our spot healing brush. I've got our Martin Hall layer selected. And that's probably the right layer to keep selected. Sometimes you want it to sample both layers, but let's try just doing this. And this is just going to use the clouds around it, not really the moon, to get rid of the little moon in there. Let's just try clicking on that and see if it gets rid of it. And yeah, that, that did a perfect job and just lets our moon layer show through really well. So I think that looks pretty good. Let's go back to our hand tool, fill the screen, take another look. I think we're done. So I'm going to save this and we'll check it out in Bridge. All right, here's our photo. Use the space bar. And there we go. We're all done. We've got a nice, big looking full moon. And we didn't have to go over to the Douglas parking deck so we could use a 400 millimeter lens to take a picture of Martin Hall that included the moon. Not only that, we didn't have to wait for a night when we had both a beautiful sunset and a full moon at sunset. Is it cheating? Well, it depends on what you're going to use the photo for. I would certainly hang this photo in my office as art. However, I probably wouldn't use this photo in a pamphlet that was advertising the college because it's not really quite what was there at that point in time. 